All right, Denise has a question that I think a lot of us can relate to. Um, I know I can certainly relate to it even now sometimes, but you know, in the beginning of my content creation journey, I, I'm like, well, where, where do I find content ideas? You know, where do I start essentially? And so I wanna just encourage you, the first thing to do is to come up with some questions that inspire you to get writing. Now, I've gotten some examples here for you. So let me, let me just talk through some examples, but actually even beyond the examples, I wanna give you another, another homework, which is to uh, start um, observing your niche mate's content. What is a niche mate? A niche mate is somebody who is in your niche, somebody who provides some similar service to you or to a similar audience. Start looking at their social media and noticing the content and, and ask yourself, what question were they trying to answer in this post video? You see what I mean? You're, 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 you're looking into the question you're looking behind their post to find what the question is or what was the prompt that got them to write or speak this. Does that make sense, Denise? And it, Denise, I, you can stay anonymous if you want to, but if you want to come on to the call and have a conversation about this, you are welcome to, yeah. do, to do that. Okay, oh, I just there. unmuted, hi. <laughs> Great, so does that make sense thus far, this, this little assignment? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, because by, basically by doing this, you will come up with unlimited content ideas. Just the other day, a client said, oh, I saw one of my niche mates wrote about, you know, 10 things your, your financial therapist wants you to know. That was what the, the article that, that she read. And she's like, wait, I can do that too for my audience, for my clients. I could say 10 things your leadership coach wants, wants you to know. You see what I mean? So she's a leadership coach. So, so by doing this, you get lots of ideas. And then other ideas I have for you is if, you, if I could only explain, and by I, I mean you, you would ask yourself this question. If you, Denise, could only explain three things about your field of expertise, Actually, do you want to say a bit about your field of expertise if you want to? It's up to you. Yeah, so I'm a, um, I'm a life coach and I specialize Great. in helping women um, who are going through a divorce or contemplating ah, divorce or coming out of a divorce. So if there were um, three things that you wish every woman who is going in that, you know, in that situation of thinking about a divorce, three things you would want them to know, what would those three things be? Um, number one is um, that everything is going to be fine. <laughs> Great. Um, number two, um, I don't know how to put it in, in better words, but That's okay. basically to, I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> I didn't yeah. expect you to, I didn't expect you to say anything. So I'm impressed that you are, but number oh, two, like, go ahead. Like, like just to, um, try to keep emotions out of it when making, mm. um, decisions about the divorce yes. agreement and yes, the yes. parenting plan, like uh, try to think clearly. Yes. Um, yes. and the third, um, Try to think about positive outcomes. Ooh, that's good. See, these three things that you just said could be multiple videos, multiple articles, even just taking one thing, which is keeping emotions out as you're making decisions, logistical decisions, right? Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, about the divorce. Huh, you, could, you, could, you could write multiple articles about that. You, know, you, could, you could, I mean, one article could be, why is that important? Another article could be, let me tell you a story, obviously keeping any, the anonymous, uh, the client anonymous. Let me tell you a story of a client, I'll keep her anonymous, who, uh, you know, learned how to do this. Uh, and then you could tell another article of, a, of, of an imaginary person who didn't do that and what happened or something you saw on the news. Mm -hmm. You know, look at this, this famous, you sure. know, couple who divorced and because there was so much acrimony and blah, 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 look what happened. Right. So you see everything you, you, everything you want people to know about, about your field could be turned into multiple pieces of content. Make sense? Okay. Yeah. Um, if, if you can only tell three stories related to your field, right? What would those three stories be? And whenever I say three, I'm just using that as a, as a tool of thinking for mm -hmm. you to just not feel so overwhelmed to go, well, what, what, what might three be? But of course, you, you'll, you might come up with more than three. And that's great too. Right, but three is a is a great start. Right? Uh, what have I read? You know, I mean, I'm sure you continue to read articles, read books, read uh, watch videos. You can always summarize a bit of what you read yesterday or last week or one of your favorite books. You know that that your clients might appreciate. You see okay. what I mean? What videos have I watched? Same idea, right? 
and by the way, not only videos, but like I've seen people successfully talk about popular, you know, Netflix shows like, hey, let's talk about, you know, whatever, um, whatever popular show is happening that that you have something to relate to regarding relationships and divorce and that kind of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So and, and that those those pieces of content are quite popular because we're like, oh, yeah, I love that show. Or, yes, I've heard of that show. I want to I want to know your perspective on it. Right. Mm -hmm. And then finally, what colleagues or clients, if appropriate, it's not always appropriate to interview clients, but in some cases it is. What colleagues or clients could I interview that might result in some nuggets of wisdom that potential clients would appreciate? Yeah, yeah that's that's actually what I was going to ask you about. Like, how would I go about that? Because I do follow some mm -hmm. divorce coaches on Instagram Great. and have like yep. exchanged like messages with them. Mm -hmm. So I could, it, it, it's okay. Like, to... of course. Oh yeah. I mean, it, I mean, uh, m most people would be honored to be asked to be interviewed um, unless you're, I mean, if you, you know, size audience size is an issue. Like it, you, you can't just, if, if you, you know, you're not well known yet, you can't just go to Brene Brown and say, Hey, Brene, I want to interview <laughs> you for my channel. You see what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. But you interview somebody who has a larger audience is okay, but not stratospheric large, but just, you know, let's say you have, you know, uh, uh, you know, you have, you have um, 300 Instagram followers and they have one to 3000 totally fine, you know, mm -hmm. or, 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 you know, or someone who has, even if someone who has 100 so you can obviously interview someone who has a smaller audience but larger audience is okay too so so would one of the questions i could ask be um what topic have you found that's that's come up more often with your clients sure. yeah you can ask all kinds yeah think about the questions that it's almost like you get to pick their brain okay in that time and and you know one thing i always remember oprah said uh, which makes her such a successful interview. She's like, she's always saying, I wonder what my audience would want to ask this person. Like, what, where's my, where's my, uh, my viewer as they, as this person, this guest speaker just said this, what, what would my typical viewer say? Well, what about that? Or what do you think about this? Right? So if you could put yourself in the shoes of your potential client or ideal client, what would that person ask this person? Okay. Yeah. Good. Yep. That's it. All right, thank, thank you. you.